So in our basement here we have a computer hooked up to the TV um, that basically functions as a DVR for recording shows um, and also just for general internet browsing while you know group is in front of the TV or watching Netflix, listening to Pandora, uh, just about anything you would do in a TV setting that you would want maybe a smart TV for or whatever. Uh, we don't have a smart TV, we just have a computer. Um, but the nice thing about that is that you can pretty much do whatever you want as long as it'll run on a standard, um, this is a Athlon <clears throat> 64, so it's an older processor but it's not the processor that's slowing me down here it's the fact that I keep running out of hard drive space so what I'm gonna attempt to do here and I will succeed eventually just how much work is it going to take I'm going to upgrade the hard drive in here while not losing anything on the computer now I know there are a lot of uh, imaging programs where you can hook up both hard drives at the same time and it'll image it or something like that but I've decided to take a more interesting route and use Windows 7's default backup and restore utility that creates disk images of your data. And so what I have here is I have in front of me, I have a blank um, DVD-R, which is going to be what I burn the restore disk with. And then I have a, um, a hard drive here which is going to actually hold the backup data. Right now the computer has a 250 gigabyte hard drive in it and it's pretty full so there's probably about 240 gigabytes on there at the moment. It's very very full. Um, this is just the remote for our television so don't worry about that one. And then right here I have a brand new um, 2 terabyte Seagate uh, Barracuda desktop drive um, this is Windows 7 and Windows 8 compatible, serial ATA, and all, all the works. Um, so what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to make a backup of the entire computer, and then I'm actually going to just take the drive out of it, set it to the side, install the new one, and basically tell Windows the hard drive failed, and see if it'll actually restore everything the way it's supposed to be. So I've inserted a blank DVD it could be a CD as well, but I think a DVD will probably read faster for booting, so I use the DVD. Um, and what I'm making now is, first I'm making the system repair disk. This is basically the thing that uh, Windows will boot a, a small copy off of in order to actually do whatever you want to do later. Um, you can also use it to run some diagnostics. It's helpful enough. Um, I think there are better tools out there, but um, the fact that Microsoft is actually including something like this in Windows is actually helpful. So uh, there's the drive and create disk and it'll I guess it's got this um, booting stuff stored somewhere on the computer. Probably the reason that Windows 7 takes 20 gigs upon install but um, either way it's making the disk, it's burning it right now. So the system is done creating a repair disk and I may just leave that in the CD-ROM drive actually there's no reason to remove it so now what I'm going to do is uh, create a system image now I've hooked up my external hard drive there see it blinking away um, that's got 400 gigabytes of free space so I'm going to tell it to put the backup data there so I'm going to say create a system image this might take a while I'm not going to film the whole thing obviously um, there is, like I said, 240 or so gigabytes on this computer right now. So uh, it's looking, it's checking for backup devices. This is Windows 7 Home Premium, um, so you can't back up to a network drive. You can only back up to local drive, uh, a local hard drive, or a CD or DVD. I think Blu-rays work too, um, but I know that Windows 7 Professional and Ultimate have the ability to back up to network uh, shares as well which is really neat okay so I'm backing up on a hard disk um, this one is the only thing I have attached really besides the drive I'm backing up so that's the only thing that's showing and I'm going to say next and it says confirm your backup it, yes it will take up to 250 gigabytes of space that's fine so start backup and this is going to take a while Yeah. 
So I've got the new hard drive in, and uh, now what basically I got to do is tell it to uh, boot off the um, CD-ROM. It's actually doing it automatically. It's a good thing because the wireless keyboard I have doesn't work with um, doesn't work with this computer in BIOS mode. So it's a good thing that the CD is loading automatically. <laughs> Takes a while to boot this uh, recovery session. As you can see, it's kind of got this um, weird uh, Windows gray bar in there. But it's boot into recovery mode. Here we go. So I'll select uh, US and then I will say uh, this bottom choice Oops. restore uh, your computer using a recovery image from earlier. That one. And then what it's going to do is it's going to scan and look, it found the image that I made just a little while ago. Uh, that time is not perfect, but uh, either way, I'll say next, and uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's see, uh, that's fine. Okay, so next, and next. Yes. This will take a few hours. Well, it didn't take very long, and uh, as soon as it was done, it just rebooted the computer. And uh, there's my Windows 7 Home Premium there. Uh, so it looks like it's just booting into Windows right now. This this isn't the fastest computer, um, although it does seem a little faster. The bigger drive may have something to do with that. It, it just can read a little bit faster. Uh, maybe seek times are just slightly less. But um, there it is. It seems to have booted back in, and now I've got two terabytes of space. <laughs> so it should be sufficient to say that um, the Windows Backup and Restore utility works just fine. And I can see uh, we got I probably plugged. Um, USBs into different ports when I put it all back together. That's fine. Uh, so it's got to install those for where they got plugged in. But um, other than that, it seems like everything is good.